The factory must grow to completion. This is the sequel to my 100 and 200 days videos. Check those out first if you haven't seen them. As robots fly everywhere and enemy forces get as rowdy as ever, can I figure out how to automate some of the most complex items in the game? And can we launch that rocket? Also, big spider robot boy? Here we go friends, 300 days of Factorio, the finale. On day 201, I continued in my state of confusion about how logistics robots work. After some Googling, I worked out there were more logistics options available to research, but only once I had some yellow science packs. So these logistic robots aren't gonna do crap for now. Now I just really want yellow science, dude. But that's easier said than done. Oh gosh, it's all so expensive. For now, I settled for getting blue circuits properly automated, just so a chest could begin filling. This stole a lot of green and red circuits from my existing factories, which is kind of problematic. But as usual, I was thinking it's fine. I zoomed off north with my extremely powerful legs. The flames seem to be working. Now that I had both flame and laser turrets automated, I was liberal placing them down as I shored up these defenses. All right, now that I've automated those turrets, it's actually pretty significant. A lot easier to just slap down defense. It was painfully obvious I needed more copper. So after placing some totally unnecessary additional loop tanks and tidying up the unused elements of this dwindling iron ore patch. Oh, look at the flamethrower go. That's sick. I began work on my first copper mining outpost. Blueprints helped speed things up as the construction robots in my portable RoboPort did their thing. And I'd soon placed 105 mining drills, which would net me about 60 copper ore per second once this beast was up and running. I ran all the belts into a belt balancer, ready to be connected to the train station. But before setting that up, it was time to place down defenses. I was again liberal with my turrets, maybe too liberal, honestly. I placed a whole bunch of flamethrower turrets and the relevant pipes, a whole bunch of turrets with dodgily distributed ammo, and a whole bunch of laser turrets and the relevant power infrastructure. This defense seems nuts. Surely this is fine. Surely this is too much. I returned to base to grab a few more items and I made a disturbing discovery. <laughs> Everything's shut down. No because we stole too much coal. I was worried I'd spread my coal supply too thin, resulting in the power plants being undersupplied. But the reality was much sillier. Oh, hang on. Oh, I think some aliens destroyed the belts. Yeah, okay. The belts got destroyed. That was honestly great news. Silly biter shenanigans are easy to deal with in a crippling coal shortage. With power back on, I turned my attention to defense maintenance as I repaired and added turrets to various pressure points around my main base. And I employed this silly willy wall tactic with a theory that it would mess with the enemy AI's pathing and hopefully stop the ranged bugs doing so much acid damage to my turrets. As you can see, my best friend Sa had already made use of this tactic over here, although hers were much neater than mine. What a show off. I then thought of another use for the robots. What if I just put logistics robots in here? Will they just repair stuff nearby? The answer is no. Construction robots would, but not logistics robots. I'll figure that out eventually, don't worry. I stocked up on rail stuff before realizing I still hadn't properly defended that spot where the coal line was destroyed. So I figured I'd better do that or risk having another power outage. Once that was done, I headed back north and the incessant attacks all around the map were really getting to me. I need Saar. Saar's the expert at dealing with all this kind of nonsense. I added some more wall art here. Clearly this will help. And soon two silly nerds attacked over here. Can you believe these cheeky fellas? outrageous behavior. I added some perfunctory defense to hopefully ward off any more sneaky noodles before finally getting started on the copper mine train station. Once again, praise the blueprint and praise the robot slave. So much time saved. Except not really because for some reason the blueprint I used refused to line up properly with the train stop. So I had to rebuild it manually. I then ran one lane of tracks, which I connected up with my existing train system down here. I ran the other lane of tracks. I added rail signals, you know the drill, and it was time to fire up the copper mine. But look at them flashing red icons. That is right. The power was out yet again. And they keep targeting my coal line. Honestly, that is a genius battle tactic. You've got to respect it. The belts were only getting destroyed as collateral. It was the turrets right next to the belt the spitters were targeting and the underground belts copped some splash damage. So I just added a bunch more turrets and called it a day. My coal line was still kind of exposed. So this was a truly lazy effort. Fingers crossed it actually works. Probably not. I began placing some additional solar panels and then Sa joined the party once more. She decided to imitate our puppy Miso's weird growls for some reason. <laughs> He makes that noise when he play fights with our other dog, Sushi. He is a grade A gremlin. And as you can hear, so is Sa. Anyway, we began discussing plans for an ambitious perimeter wall project. These aggressive pings on the map show where we were hoping to place walls to create an enormous safe zone in which we could expand our factory and claim more natural resources. As I said, very ambitious. This is a huge area. We began with the Northwest, since it had a relatively thin slice of land to wall off between the two giant bodies of water. I headed up first to begin clearing some hives out of the way. And this one alien base was enormous. Look at the absolute horde of gooses chasing me. They were mostly blue big boys by this point too, so they were tough. My tactic was to lead them on a merry chase as I did drive-by after drive-by, shooting cannon shells at the hives, slowly chipping away at the base until there was nothing left. That one base took me like eight minutes because it was so massive. Finally killed this giant nest. Holy crap. 
Not too forever. Once she'd gathered the items she needed, Sa was up here too, beginning work on the Great Wall. It was Ziggy and Zaggy. I'd done my job clearing, so I left Sa to do hers, and I returned to finish the copper operation. I added a second train here, and the last thing needed was an offload station back at base. Except rather than creating a neat and logical train offloading solution down here, I had created a glorious mess. I explored a couple of options, but ended up peeling a track off here, and I successfully threaded through the mess of underground pipes and belts to make it work. Copper. Output one, copper, mine one, Dugas, Digus station. When I went to set the train schedule, I discovered the trains up at Dugas Digus had no path to base. So clearly something had gone wrong. I always crossed them over somehow. I don't know. I, yeah. It's fine. Somehow it's obligatory for me to end up crossing the track lanes unnecessarily. But once that was sorted, the copper ore train constipation was resolved. Should just keep going through and then straight onto its own Copper output? Oh my gosh, it's working. I checked in with Sa. This was her report. Uh, it's intense. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do all this. <laughs> I think you're going to finish the rocket before I'm done. <laughs> Positive stuff. Great to hear. She was all over it. She was actually tearing down some localized defenses from the resource nodes to use at the Great Wall, since the Great Wall was, of course, the new frontier. I decided to revisit my failed RoboPort efforts down here. I placed some stuff in a provider chest, hoping the robots would use this stuff to replace destroyed defenses on the front line. Then I tried to test the RoboPort robots repairing prowess by grenading a turret. And then I realized... Oh, your, your logistics robots, you're not construction robots. Of course you're not repairing it. I replaced these guys with construction robots and it worked. I extended the logistics network with another robo port so the robots can reach these defenses to help repair them too. And I performed another experiment, destroying one of my turrets. Put the robots back in. They pick up a turret from the provider chest, they rebuild the turret. Okay, nice. This copper smelter was once again underperforming, meaning it wasn't getting the copper ore it needed, but I of course now had a solution for that. I snagged a belt from the new train stop and performed underground belt acrobatics to connect it in. And here's part of the reason the copper ore was running low, by the way. The starter copper node was now completely dry. It's completely dead, but we've got more copper running in now from here. It was actually quite refreshing to carve out some free space right in the middle of my factory. I'll probably fill it with a giant mess in no time. It's once again working at full capacity, which is good news. I handcrafted a bunch of radars and began placing them around the factory just to improve my ability to diagnose issues at a glance. Since radars, of course, allow you to see the area around them, even if your character is far away. I handcrafted a bunch of roboports too. And despite being very limited on construction robot numbers, I made a habit of handcrafting as many as I could to place in roboports like this one designed to assist in repairing and rebuilding defenses. Most of our defenses were holding quite well by this point, with only the odd patch up required. And of course, the occasional addition of random wall silly willies. But at some point soon, I was hoping to have robots do the heavy lifting of defense maintenance. That was the dream. I was inspired to increase our solar power production for two reasons. It would mean our power demands would use up less coal, meaning more coal would be available for the factory itself, and I hoped it would slow down our pollution cloud too. I had automated solar panels and accumulators ages ago, so I had quite a few handy to place down, and it was more effective than I had thought it would be. The solar is actually producing a decent amount, you know. Do not eat me! Burn, maybe burn! Alright, well, you know, a bit of solar power, yeah! Yeah, what, are you, what are you up to? I need help. Sai had finished up her great wall in the northwest and was now building the longest wall in history on the eastern front. But she needed my help clearing away some buggy bases. So it was time for me to roll out again. This first hive was literally in the way of her majestic wall, so I cleaned it up first. And together we marched off to take out a couple of cheeky biter bases that were actually inside the perimeter Sai was trying to set up. When we took out this little alien base by the water, we discovered there was an avenue into the north up here. Oh, there's another one up here. Oh, we have to block off this spot too. We took it out and I posted I pushed north a little further to scout things out while Sa began work on a little wall here. Good luck getting through, nerd. Sa continued work on her ridiculously long eastern wall and I struck out to clear nearby hives as I wanted to decrease the chance of attacks in the short term as this would give time for Sa's defense to come into good effect. Oh, I just hopped out of my tank accidentally and then ran myself over. That's glorious. <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating, dude. <laughs> I think you mean glorious. <laughs> I crafted myself some new wheels and zoomed back out to the eastern front, and Sa rambunctiously built her endless wall right into the loving arms of some aliens. Ah. I was off killing other aliens rather than helping her. I took out a number of hive clusters, which were all mercifully small for some reason, and as Sa continued with her meticulous layers of defense, I took out two final hives and the east was cleared of cockroaches. I patched up some vulnerabilities back at base and continued to emphasize strategic use of radars and roboports to improve our vision and leverage robots to carry the load of repairing and replacing defenses. I extended the logistics network, which extends the robot's area of operations. So if I turn this... 
It's now a passive provider chest. Having the automated turrets go into a provider chest within the logistics network means the robots are able to go and pick up those turrets to use to replace destroyed turrets. In other words, the robots now had a replenishing supply of turrets at their disposal. And this marked the beginning of the extension of our RoboPort coverage to the whole factory and the replacement of regular chests with logistics provider chests, meaning eventually the robots would be stocked with every item imaginable. But first I needed more robots and the key ingredient, flying robot frames. These need electric engine units which I'd semi-automated over here with hand-fed chests. As Sa finished off her eastern wall project, I extended out a factory here to make both construction and logistics robots. Ah, my god, oh no. No! That car's trunk was full of items, so that was a big stinker from Saar. Soon I was piling up the relevant materials into all these chests, which was quite an operation. These robots are not cheap, and I left those to craft. For now, I'll continue hand feeding these assembling machines, but soonish, logistics robots will take on the heavy lifting for me. You'll see what I mean, it's glorious. I tended to some repairs and continued placing down robo ports. I also did some more wall silly willies to bamboozle the aliens. Can't go wrong with wall silly willies. Seriously though, I went wild with the wall silly willies on day 226. It's pretty much all I did. Meanwhile, Sa officially finished her turret placements on the eastern wall and left that alone for now, leaving me solo to continue growing the factory. She'll be back soon, don't worry. And on day 227, I placed a bunch more solar panels. I previously complained to Sa that these kind of suck, but if you get enough of them down, they do actually pull their weight, assuming you place down a bunch of accumulators too. I restocked the robot factory to ensure it kept doing its thing. All right, we got a lot of robots piling up now. Got a bunch of logistics and construction robots. I placed yet more robo ports and continued with the solar panels plus accumulators. We're placing so many solar panels. By the way, my solar power is now producing like almost everything in during the day. That's nuts. I turned this spot down here into an absolute accumulator heaven. Look at the accumulation going on. 1.5 gigajoules. Like how much does that actually save you during the night? I have no idea. I had more left over and they were better off accumulating than sitting in the chest. So down I plonked them. The logistics network continued to grow and the number of robots and repair packs and items available to the network was increasing too. So the groundwork was in place and maintenance of the perimeter walls became less of a chore for me as the robots picked up the slack. Where are the laser turrets? Put the laser turrets in provided chests. If you look there, it says logistics system storage. Those are all the items available to the robots to use. Very good. I added power poles to the logistics network too. And on and on, the robo port coverage grew and grew. On day 231, I basically just stared at the red circuit setup and wished it worked better. I admired our southern defensive efforts as this alien attack was obliterated. And I turned my attention towards automating yellow science. To begin, I placed two smelting arrays. One for copper, which I pulled from the train station. In fact, getting the ore over was the hardest part since the bots built the smelter arrays for me. Belt finagling is quite the mission when your factory is a complete circus. The other smelter was for iron, which I of course pulled from the train station. The second iron train station, that is. Where's the coal line? The coal line's not too far, right? Not too far indeed. And hello copper and iron plates. I broke my brain figuring out what I needed to make one yellow science a second. I need one of these every seven seconds. I'm gonna have to do seven machines. That's like roughly one a second. Let's call it five a second and then this requires... Makes sense to me, let's go. To begin, I needed green circuits and lots of them. I placed 16 copper cable assembling machines, enough to make 64 copper cables a second. I have no idea why I did these silly willies with the splitters. I'm pretty sure that's actually counterproductive, but whatever. I placed 12 green circuit assembling machines to produce 24 a second. And the random water pipe here didn't help as I attempted to belt the required materials, but I got there eventually with the magic of underground belts. Got spicy down here. If I do this, will... My robots go and build them. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Now I didn't know you could do that. You can build remotely and the robots will listen. That is sick. Okay, good news, good news. I added two more assembling machines to the green circuit lineup for a total of 14 to produce 28 green circuits a second. And next it was time for the red. And for red circuits, you need plastic. So I yoinked some petroleum and brought it over here where I got four plastic a second producing. Next, the advanced circuit assemblers went down, 12 to produce two per second. These needed a few cables of their own. So I made a cheeky bonus three copper cable assemblers to share a belt with the plastic. And there she goes. Meanwhile, alien attacks continued to harass my Southern walls, but I was pleased to report the alien attack Attacks are just not really causing me that much trouble. I stocked up on some stuff, and while doing so, I placed a bunch more provider chests, adding everything to the logistics network. And then these silly nerds belied my words about my awesome defense by infiltrating my walls. They just walk through here. 
I think they would just walked through here. That is why you probably shouldn't leave random holes in your wall. I extended the logistics network over here and placed perhaps a touch too many laser turrets down. This is gonna get broken through soon. We got a lot of angry nerds around here. I headed out there, and as I approached this oil field, I wondered why it had no defenses. I was totally unaware Sar had ripped them down, and I was worried that if the aliens broke through the Great Walls, this would be their target, so I rebuilt. I imagine Sar will randomly destroy it soon, but it's fine. I then reinforced the Great Wall, adding a bunch more turrets down and its own logistics system, with a roboport, a decent army of construction robots, and some materials for them to use maintaining the defenses. I only had four roboports on me though, so the robot's reach only made it about a quarter of the way up the wall. I added a bunch more laser turrets too, but I ran out like halfway, less than halfway. It's fine. I headed out intending to clear some nearby aliens to delay the inevitable assault on the wall, but look at the size of these bases and look how many there are. So nope, changed my mind. The wall will just have to hold. On the run home, I admired the research options that would soon be accessible once the yellow science was ready. Okay, this could be sick. Some artillery, some nukes. Holy, okay, the Spidertron. All right, we got options, we got options. I handcrafted and placed some more roboports before returning to my factory project. Next, I needed sulfuric acid for the blue circuits. So I set up some chemical plants to produce yellow candy and inserted them into another chemical plant, along with iron plates and water to produce the acid. By the way, while in some ways I was making a more complex bunch of factories than ever, I was having a pretty easy time of it, as most of what I was doing was a repeat of what I'd done before. Well, I hadn't done blue circuits to this scale before, but the hard part is getting all the composite materials ready, so it was no worries. Actually, scratch that, I built it in the wrong place. Also, I built way more assembling machines than I could even maintain because I needed way more green circuits. These blue circuits use a whopping two per second for each assembling machine. So these 20 machines wanted 40 green circuits a second. I was only making 28 a second and a bunch of those were already being used for the red circuits. So the maths was clearly not adding up. Also, I built the belts in the wrong place for the long arm inserters to reach. So yeah, I was definitely lying. This factory had me in all sorts of trouble. I got it working eventually though, a genuine triumph. Except I wasn't very happy with how the green circuits were being distributed. So I did some of these ones and honestly, I don't think this was any better, but I plonked down a chest to collect them blue circuits and called it a day. These blue circuits were just the first of three items needed for the yellow science, by the way. Holy moly, that is a big project. Also, Sar was now back. I'm the biggest dingus. And I finally realized my maths was off. I've got plenty of red circuits coming into this, I think, but not enough green circuits. Yeah. Whatever. I decided to cut these belts off just over halfway, effectively decommissioning a bunch of the blue circuit assembly machines because I didn't want them to steal too many green circuits as I needed these to overflow down to the next section of the factory. Sar got to work eliminating aliens that had encroached towards our southern wall, or should I say enroached. <laughs> And I placed a little stubby smelting array to produce the steel needed for flying robot frames. I needed less than one a second, hence the stubbiness. Did you know that chickens are actually the closest living relatives of the T-Rex? With my heart full of profound chicken facts, I finished up with the steel and moved on to the batteries. These require sulfuric acid, and I'd already set some up for the blue circuits, so that was convenient. Whatever you did to the research to make the ammo do more damage or shooting damage or whatever. It's a lot, Sar. Sar was clearly enjoying the big damage military upgrades and it looks like she found bright green uranium. I never noticed until editing this. How about that? Anyway, I got iron and copper plates sharing a belt, whacked down eight chemical plants to produce two batteries a second. And as Sar got surrounded by hungry boys down south. What the heck? <laughs> the big bite has pinned me against a wall and ripped the flesh from my bones. I got them batteries up and running. Oh, I need the electric engine units. All right, we need lube for that. Lube, uh, I'm producing way too many engine units from earlier, which is great news. Because I overproduced blue science earlier, making double what I intended, I had doubled the engines. And as I said, this was great news. I had heaps of lube flying around too. Plus I'd already teed up the green circuits, so all I had to do was bring it all together and soon I was making two of these every five seconds. I technically only needed one every three seconds, so I'd chosen to overproduce a little. And with that, I was finally ready to automate the flying robot frames. Meanwhile, Sar was accidentally making use of logistics robots. Why are robots stealing stone from me? Not that I mind. See, I was oblivious to the fact that we had now unlocked the ability to have logistics robots deliver and take items from us. But Sar, choosing to trash some excess stone she'd picked up, was accidentally using this feature. As soon as she entered the radius of the logistics system of roboports, the logistics robots I'd made earlier that were chilling in a roboport were triggered to come and grab the trash stone and chuck it in a storage chest for her. More on this glorious system soon. After changing my mind regarding the belt work multiple times, I finally got the four composite materials ready to feed into the assembling machines. And on day 249, after several days of legwork, flying robot frames were automated at a rate of roughly one every three seconds from these seven assembling machines. I need 21. I need literally one of these a second. So I need 
20. Yes, indeed, I was gonna need 20 assembling machines producing one a second of them low density structures. So I extended out the plastic setup I'd built for the red circuits earlier. Copper and steel, oh crap, I should've made more steel. No. Ideally, I could have just made this steel smelter longer, but I'd built a bunch of crap in the way. But it's fine, I just made the robots build another stubby one. Meanwhile, Sar had turned her attention to the north once more, taking out yet more encroaching aliens, because these cockroaches sure do love to encroach. And she'd put three laser defense systems into her power armor, so she was zapping up a storm like an absolute beast. The steel was soon up, and next I needed more copper plates, a whopping 20 per second. And the only thing for that was a dedicated smelting array, but I was running low on space. The entire north was theoretically secure now, so these defenses were redundant. It was time for them to go, and in their place went the smelter. Though, as I said, the security of the north is indeed only theoretical, so I put a little wall further up, just in case. I plugged in a copper line from the copper ore station, and soon brought a fresh belt of copper plates down to party. Meanwhile, Sar got to work setting up another iron mine to the north, because the first iron mine up there was beginning to dwindle, so this new one would act as a replacement. I've added on all this just for yellow science. This is all just for yellow science, excluding the loop, although some of that's going towards yellow science. And I, of course, wasn't finished. Next came 20 assembling machines for the low density structures. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Maybe they won't send another attack because they're like, oh yeah, Greg's got it. He's attacking yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> While Greg absolutely popped off in his relentless assault, I spent my time belting up and firing up this latest addition to the factory. And finally, after what felt like an eternity, I placed down seven assembling machines to produce one yellow science per second. I pulled the blue circuits, flying robot frames, and low density structures down to be joined in glorious matrimony. And just as the yellow wee science juice came online, I was treated to a beautiful sight. Greg's back. <laughs> He brought Bob. Well, the Greg and Bob are actually stretching the robot's abilities here. I think the robot's taking damage. Don't die, robots. No! I noodled the yummy yellow all the way down and got it sharing a belt with the purple science packs. And that was six out of six science packs needed to launch a rocket, all automated at a rate of at least one per second each. Yellow, yellow, yellow. I'm going to research logistic system straight up because that's what I want. Oh, yeah, we're using lots of power now. Look how quickly it uses the accumulated charge. Oh my gosh. We devised a plan to use the area north of the factory to place a hell of a lot of solar panels and accumulators to help deal with the power issues. Because while this area down here was putting in respectable effort, it clearly wasn't big enough. And then I finally realized. Oh wait, what? We do have, we do have personal logistics. I picked up a couple hundred logistics robots and added them to the network and began setting the requests for my personal logistics. Now, will robots come and give me more? They doing it, they doing it. Yahoo! I love robots. Basically, if you're inside the logistics network, that is, if you have roboports nearby, the logistics robots will detect what's in your bag, and if you are short on a particular item you've requested, they will bring it to you, assuming it's available for them to grab from a logistics chest. Absolutely glorious. Meanwhile, Sar was going big with the solar panels up here, and I continued deciding what I wanted the robots to keep stocked in my inventory. When a particular item showed up red in this menu, that meant it was not available to the logistics network. So I made sure to switch all items into provide a chest to fix that. Requester chests. Let's make some of these. Now that that logistics research had finished, these fancy chests were available. Much like personal logistics, these chests allow you to request specific items from the logistics network to be placed in the chest, meaning this was my ticket to automate more stuff without relying on belts. I could just have the robots bring whatever was needed. I got to work replacing all the chests of this robot factory setup and set each chest to request the relevant items, and soon both construction and logistics robots were fully automated. No more hand feeding required. Look at those robots go. I got stack inserters automated using the same tricks, and I headed north to connect Sars new iron mine to the train network while she was off patching up our defenses. You know the drill, two lines of train track goodness noodled their way down here where I connected them into the network. Commander never born. He was he was never born, he was just spawned from the earth. Iron mine three. Never born. Only spawn. I have no idea what I'm waffling about, but I set the two Neverborn iron trains to supplement the dwindling iron mine one by offloading at the iron output one train station. And that train station's belt setup was still an absolute circus. So I tore it down and rebuilt it using the more refined methods I developed as the playthrough went along. Meanwhile, Sar finished covering the new iron mine in mining drills. And look at the robots restocking me with belts as I go. Beautiful stuff. I tidied up some more belt work and removed this decommissioned belt. Oh, personal robot port mark two. Yeah, I've got that on. Ooh. 
<laughs> oh, you got one? Yeah, I've got two. These Fit 25 construction robots compared to the Mark 1's mere 10, so this was going to be a juicy upgrade. It was going to take a fair few low density structures though, and I figured it'd be good to have some of those on hand. And since I was pretty sure I had surplus plastic, steel, and copper plates, I simply extended this down a bit and had these six assembly machines feed their output into a chest. I was tired of handcrafting robot ports as well, so I automated those using request to chests to get the robot slaves to bring in the required steel plates, red circuits, and iron gear wheels. And this made me realize steel wasn't available to the logistics network, so I fixed that up. As Sar continued caking the land with the solar panels, I pondered what it would take to beat the game. All right, what do we need for the rocket? Rocket silo should be fine. Rocket part. Yes, indeed. The rocket required to finish the game was now available to research. I didn't begin researching it just yet, but we were getting close. But we better make sure the factory doesn't come crashing down on itself in the meantime. Our power was looking good during the day thanks to the influx of solar panels, but during the night, the coal power wasn't cutting it, leaving the slack to be picked up by the accumulators. But it was becoming clear we didn't have enough of those to last the night. So you know what that means. Look at them all. Look at them all. all right, if these fill up with lots of juice, that should keep us in better stead during the night. I finally equipped my first Mark II RoboPort. My personal army of robots grows. And while Saar was performing admirably, expanding the solar panel field, the automation speed of solar panels was simply unacceptably slow. So with a little finagling, I got two more assemblers crafting solar panels. We could probably make Power Armor Mark II now, right? It's much bigger. Oh yeah. Yeah, baby. Speed module too. We need a bunch of speed modules though. I realized I'd stuffed up the new solar panel factories, so I fixed that. I love the robot system. It's just so satisfying. Maybe one day she'll talk about me like that too. Perhaps if I mindlessly obey her every command and never tire and never talk back and make bloop bloop noises. I might have to try that actually. Anyway, I set out to try and automate the modules required for Power Armor Mark II, and I made a discovery. Oh, we're low on plastic. I feel like with my janky mess of a factory, I was always fixing random problems. And here was another. We were low on petroleum and therefore low on plastic and other petrol-based items. The oil refineries were working fine, and we had plenty of crude oil, so I concluded we needed more refineries, turning more of that crude oil into petroleum gas. Sa volunteered to set that up, so she blueprinted what I'd done and got to work. Uh, with this new field of accumulators, it might actually survive the night. Yeah, because now we're getting solar power again, because it's early morning, apparently. Slowly coming back in. Sa demanded bricks, so I yoinked some from here to add to the logistics network, so she could get her robot slaves to pick them up. And I figured I'd better do the same with walls too, so I did. The military science doesn't need this many walls anyway, so no big deal stealing these. And with that, it felt like pretty much every useful item we'd unlocked so far was now available to be personally delivered to us, which is great news because it's very hard finding things in this jumble of a factory. I noticed some of these boilers weren't getting the water they needed, and therefore the steam engines weren't getting steam and the coal power plant wasn't working at capacity. I gave this section of the power plant its own water pump and pipe system, solving the problem. And while I was here, I figured I might as well expand this a little since our power needs were only going up, especially with increasing numbers of robots flying all over the place. I added a few more accumulators to the power network too. Since we didn't have oil refineries or chemical plants automated, it had taken Saar a little while to collect and handcraft everything she needed, but she was now at work doubling our petroleum production. And as I was admiring our power stats... Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shrimp, Randall train. That's always so good. I placed down yet more accumulators. And as you can see, solar panels were almost entirely supplying our power needs during the day by this point. Oh, you did it all the way up there. There'd been some miscommunication about where to place the oil setup. So Sarah had done it further away than I was expecting, which didn't really matter. Though if, for example, my pixel man's big toe was sore, I guess it would have been problematic. I pulled some water over and helped piping up all this nonsense. Sar placed another glorious lube storage area. And I was soon running a pipe full of petrol, which I plugged into our existing petrol pipe back at base, solving the shortage for good. The solar panel field continued to grow, and as you can see in the top right, we'd very slowly been researching rocket silo tech. And now that we'd finally solved the plastic shortage, it was time to again look into automating tier 2 modules. 30 second crafting time each is not so slow bro, holy crap. And I discovered I needed some concrete to make the silo, so it was time to automate concrete, I guess. Oh, by the way, our defenses were somehow elite at this point. We barely had to bother with them at all, because whatever minor repairs were necessary, the robots took care of. I pulled water, stone bricks, and iron ore over here, realized I built the assemblers in the wrong place, rebuilt the whole thing, and soon concrete was automated. 740 number of available robots. 
Holy crap, that's a lot. Yes, indeed. At this point, there were 740 logistics robots in the network doing our bidding. 740 robots that Sa loves more than she loves me. I got to work automating tier two modules using a setup with requester chests. These cost a lot of all three colors of circuits though, and I was already stretched thin with red circuits especially. So this was only gonna make things worse. We needed these modules to make Mark II power armor though, so it was impossible to resist. I ended up with this setup, crafting the second tier of speed, efficiency, and power modules. The 1000 concrete I needed was ready, so I grabbed it, plus all the other crap required and got the rocket silo crafting. Rocket silo is complete. I guess I put it somewhere like here. Okay, so this makes rocket parts out of low density structures, rocket fuel and rocket control units. Okay, low density structure is not too bad because I already automated extra of those. How the hell do I make rocket fuel? So the silo was down, but it was gonna take a lot of work to build the rocket that would shoot forth from the silo. Some resourceful aliens attacked a random spot they'd never bothered before. So I placed some defenses for the first time in ages before looking into automating the three items needed to build our rocket. Let's make one every three seconds of each. That'll do. One item every three seconds doesn't sound like much, but the low density structures, rocket control units, and rocket fuel all take ages to make. So this was still gonna require a whole bunch of assembling machines. First, I placed some speed module production down for the rocket control units. These immediately began sucking up even more green and red circuits, so that was a worry. I did some cheeky belt work here in an attempt to hopefully mildly improve circuit production, and then I realized something. Wait, I think I made way too many. What am I doing? I cut that down to size before placing the 10 assembling machines to craft rocket control units. By the way, I should explain something. By this point, I'd unlocked blue belts that move 45 items per second. 50% more than the red belts. And tier three assembling machines too. I was using the tier three assemblers as I'd automated those somewhere, but I wasn't bothering to use the blue belts because that wouldn't really improve things unless I upgraded my smelting arrays too by making them longer or rebuilding them completely with electric furnaces. And I had neither the space in my factory nor the inclination to do that. And I figured good enough was good enough at this point. I'd also researched nuclear power way back. So I could have mined out the uranium node we spotted earlier and whipped out some nuclear shenanigans. But again, good enough will do. And I I had SAR's giant field of solar panels that were precisely that when it came to power production. Besides, my key automation goal this run was to automate each science in the build up to the rocket, and I'd already achieved that. Anyway, I got the rocket control units moving by bringing blue circuits into a requester chest. All right, we're now putting, <laughs> we're putting rock, one rocket control unit every three seconds into the thing, and it needs 10 of those to craft every three seconds, so it's not even enough for anywhere near one a second, but she's got to believe. I do believe. Sa believes. Also, she had a song to sing. Making my M2 power armor. Next, I aim to extend the low density structure factory out some more. So this bonus area would produce an extra one of those every three seconds. But I totally forgot to connect inputs, so that was a wee bit silly. Meanwhile, Sa was reinforcing the far north, which was finally being tested as our pollution cloud had grown big enough to infuriate the locals up there. I'm amazed that the east has not been absolutely squished and likewise the northeast. I did add a bunch of laser turrets up there, but it hasn't even been attacked. It's because it's, all the bases are just on the outside. Yeah, they're not quite getting furious, no. which is great news. I wonder if that's because our solar panels had reduced coal burning. Either way, I won't argue. I added the output for my extremely good low density structure factory onto this belt. So now those were going into the rocket too, though definitely not as fast as I'd intended. I discovered I now had the modules I needed to make my Mark II power armor. Oh, I can make one. Go. And it was soon ready. Ooh, it's huge. Holy crap. Definitely go the triple robo port. Definitely go lots of legs. <laughs> you can make portable fusion reactors. Probably have to put nuclear power thingos in it. How do you make those? I had plenty of room, so clearly I needed two more sets of legs. And I was curious about the portable fusion reactor, so I began crafting one of those. Because some cheeky nuclear fusion in my backpack sounds like a dream. The final item needed for the rocket build was rocket fuel. And for that, I needed solid fuel, which can be made a few different ways. I was absolutely swimming in like 6 million liters of lube, so I opted to produce solid fuel out of heavy oil, which I set up to insert into provider chest ready for bots to transport. Secondly, I needed light oil, so I pulled a pipe of that all the way over. I placed 10 rocket fuel assembly machines down, piped it up, and once again made use of requester chests to bring over the solid fuel required. And that was the third and final rocket component automated. Well, we're going to launch a rocket, that's for sure. I think in the meantime, we also want to test artillery, which is almost done researching, Spidertron, and maybe try and do a nuke as well. Problem is, like, we have our research is so flaming slow. Artillery is ready. Let's go. Oh, there's so many more things to do. 
Artillery, oh my gosh. You need space science for some of these upgrades. Oh, I suppose I better research that. Researching space science lets you craft satellites to send up in the rocket, which means 1,000 space science packs will come back down from space, allowing you to unlock super end game research. In fact, you can infinitely upgrade things like mining speed and robot speed using space science. My portable fusion reactor was finished, so I equipped it. I don't think I have to put anything in it. It's just working. 750 kilowatts and each solar panel only does 30. It takes up 12 slots though, but that's still way more per slot. Great news, my many pairs of legs were now powered much more reliably. And it was now a waiting game as we worked towards a big old rocket and some cool research unlocks to investigate. But while waiting, there was plenty to do, ensuring our defenses stayed true, fixing the infinite problems that seemed to pop up in a janky factory of this size, and of course, expanding the factory some more. Solid fuel was being made too slowly for my liking, so I turned this line of light oil into a secondary source of that, and a more difficult problem to solve was the severe lack of red circuits that had become painfully apparent. In fact, due to this red circuit shortage, the blue science was barely even working. Circuits were being stolen by logistics robots willy-nilly because there were so many requester chests demanding them. The only option was to make some dedicated circuit factories to flood the robots with more circuits to move about. While Sar went bananas extending out RoboPort networks all the way to our northern perimeter, I tapped this copper node. Next came the train station, and the whole beast was online in short order. Here's Sar on the perimeter wall, and here's me running red and soon the new copper mine was connected into the train system. Yeah, the train system's stuffed now. Oh, I don't have room for four to queue at the copper... Okay. I had this new copper mine offloading at the existing copper offload station in order to give it enough copper to fill four red belts, but there wasn't room for four trains to queue. Don't worry though, I placed down this beautiful loopy to make space. Why is it coal in here? Why is it coal in here? How that happened? I don't know how that happened, but I guess my copper belts were now mildly coal contaminated. By the way, I'd given up on space science by this point because we were running out of time. The plan for the great finale became to unlock Spidertron, have a celebratory spider rampage, and maybe check out artillery and nukes too. Though if our research speed wasn't pathetically slow due to a severe circuit deficit, maybe I would have been able to fit more into the 300 days. Speaking of circuit deficits, I continued work on the solution to that. I extended the RoboPort network out here and began slapping down a circuit factory starting with smelting into which I ran copper and iron from the train stations. I made a bunch of blueprints and began placing them down over here. Copper cables, green circuits, red circuits, plastic, and soon the whole operation was online. Next was the addition of blue circuits, and I was pleased to find you can make blueprints remotely using vision from the radars. And the blue circuits need sulfuric acid, so that was of course part of the setup. Meanwhile, Sar was now bringing the heat down in the south, clearing out a bunch of aliens so we could claim some resource nodes down there. Of course, the entire point of this circuit factory was to add more circuits to the network, so so the robots could deliver them and hopefully get the factory at large to work properly. So I'd plan this so all three colors of circuits would begin filling up provided chests. But it was not making as many reds as I wanted. And so as Sar built yet another great wall down south, I set up a requester chest for red circuits down at the blue science, because as I mentioned earlier, the blue science was struggling and as a result was hugely slowing down our research speed. I also decommissioned some factories such as the module factory because I didn't want them to steal any more red circuits. I ran around like a confused dingus on day 291, trying to convince myself research was going faster after my recent efforts, which I think it actually was, maybe very slightly. And on day 292, I still had time to kill before the rockets were ready, so I had the bot slap down another smelter and the same green red circuit setup. Except this time I made the red circuit part a little longer, as I didn't intend for this to make any blue circuits. I just wanted as many reds as possible. With that ready to go, one ingredient was missing, copper ore to go into my new smelter. I probably could have stretched my copper train station to five belts of output, but rather than doing that, I went for a jog down south to a land recently conquered by Sar. She was busy civilizing the place with some rover ports of gentrification and she'd made a good chunk secure so this copper patch was free to plunder. It was a nice big juicy one too. Once I had the belt work down the question became do I make a train network to transport these or do I just run belts north like a gremlin? I decided to gremlin it up. I went and grabbed a bunch of belts and while doing that the Spidertron research finally completed. He one raw fish for a Spidertron. Why? Why? These are fish as a Spidertron's brain. I lay down some serious beltage and soon realized if I tried to run all four lanes up, I was gonna run out of belts. So I settled for just two. I took them over cliffs, over and around water, and before long, I was plugging it into the smelter and pulling over some plastic and copper cables to round out the factory. I expanded copper cable production over here to account for the extra red circuits in the setup. And I have no idea what the maths was. I was just going willy-nilly hyper dingus mode and hoping. I even added some bonus red circuit assemblers. This setup added about four red circuits a second to the factory at large and surely solved a good chunk of the shortage. It felt good to somewhat fix up the flow of the entire factory before launching the rocket. It's actually crazy. I've been like head in the sand doing this crap. What have you been up to? There's lots of running between different walls. <laughs> I feel like in the last 
like Cover Hours of Gameplay, a bunch of alien bases have spawned in the areas that we had previously cleared. Yeah, it's safe to say Saw carried this run. Oh, by the way, I made a spider. Well, these have been doing nothing the whole time. What did I do? I gotta be honest with you, I was stressed. I'd been wishing more and more as time went by and as the factory grew that I'd planned better and had cleaner structure. That things were more logical so that problems would be easier to solve. That I had half a clue what I was doing. Alas, none of the above was true, therefore I was indeed stressed. And while I wanted to test out some fun endgame military toys... We can launch the rocket and just end our misery. <laughs> 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 the rocket is here, look at it, it's standing tall. Is it? We could launch it and finish the game. But we did not do that just yet. I gave up testing artillery. I gave up testing a nuke, but I had a Spidertron built. So we were duty bound to take her out for a spin before any rocket was permitted to head towards the stars. And so I quickly automated explosive rockets, the ammo the Spidertron's rocket launchers use. And on the night of day 302, once about 150 of those rockets were done, Sa and I hopped into the spider and went for a cheeky jaunt. You can just walk over the solar panels in this. It makes a funny noise, dude. <laughs> Glorious noises, no doubt. And then it was time to murder. <laughs> run! 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 I mean, it shoots fast. That's why it's better than a tank. It shoots like 40 times faster. We've yeah, almost used they? all the ammo. We had 200 ammo. We've used it all already. <laughs> oh, really? Once the rockets were all gone, we simply ran through the aliens, and the only thing doing any damage was our laser defense systems, and they were tearing it up. The thing with this is, if we're both passengers, you can put, like, a bunch of laser defenses in the spider, and then you can put so many on your characters. I've got four on my character and one in the spider at the moment. So yeah, that's five four. and so yeah, we're doing like nine at once. Yep. And we, we could easily fit way more. So that was a very fun bug squashing, a worthy celebration at the end of a successful campaign to create many, many colorful science juices and a rocket. And on day 304, it was time to launch. Are you ready? I'm ready. Launch. Hello? Oh, oh. it's launching. Rock on. <laughs> That's so cool. We oh, did it. wow. We got some stats. Got some stats. 35 hours. Nice. Look how many spitters and... Holy dude. We, we Tens of thousands of enemies killed. You can see there it says the character only died seven times. I think that was just my character. If size counted as well, it would be like 307 deaths. Of course, the factory could grow infinitely, but... We've reached our goal. The rocket is in space. Check out my 300 Days of Graveyard Keeper movie. It is hilarious. Many laughs guaranteed.